Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor <clears throat> and I wanted to show you, this is a cool video. This is one of the incoming pre-IPO investments with link to my sponsor, linqto.com. This is a space company for space like tourism. Watch this. Imagine rising above the clouds to the edge of space, looking down on Earth in the comfort of a luxury space balloon. How cool Sounds like be? a sci-fi movie, right? It's not. This ambitious company is making it happen. But let's rewind a bit. Space Perspective is radically reimagining the future of space tourism. They've developed the first carbon neutral space flight experience. Passengers board the spaceship Neptune, a luxury cabin featuring a world-class menu, comfortable seats, and even Wi-Fi, which then ascends to space via the help of their space balloon. The entire experience requires no rockets, no training, and no G-forces, making the experience as comfortable as a first-class flight. Up to eight passengers can embark on this radical new space flight, spending six hours peering down on Earth from the largest windows ever flown to space. Their goal is to expand access to these incredible views to as many customers Customers as possible while reducing their impact on the environment. Tickets cost substantially less than other space tourism competitors, and so far they've sold an impressive 1,600 tickets, minute, representing those ticket customers prices as possible again? while reducing their impact on the Let's environment. Tickets cost substantially less than other. $125,000 for your seat <laughs> versus uh, Virgin Galactic. I guess that is 450,000. Blue Origin, which is I think Amazon's thing, 1.25 million. They're going to have to get down on those prices a little bit before I'm going to do it. Now, speaking of prices and tickets, um, XRP Las Vegas, the ticket sales are now accelerating like they did last year when they sold out. They're, they're going to accelerate here into March and April. The, the people that are going to be there, it's like, I mean, Brad Combs like hit a grand slam on this. This year, it's, it's, he's already, just the people coming, it's already like, whoa. Chris Giancarlo, David Schwartz, CEO of Uphold, CEO of iTrust Capital, Eleanor Terrett, Ray Fuentes, Jeremy Hogan's going to be there, Robin O'Connell, CEO of Enterprise Uphold, Nancy Beaton, Chief Revenue Marketing Officer of Uphold, John Deaton that's running against Senator Warren in Massachusetts, CEO of Link to, Link to Joe Endoso, Farron Pratt, CEO of Pierces, Pierces Met a lawman who, who is the attorney, Vanderbilt law attorney, extremely smart guy that helped me get back on X. Then he added Lynette Zing, who's the gold, she's one of the major gold people on, on social media. He's got Perry and Boring. And then on top of that, there's a dinner going on there in XRP Las Vegas with Brad Garlinghouse is going to be in attendance. Michael Arrington's going to be there. Uh, and I can't even imagine that Michael Arrington and Brad Garlinghouse would be in Vegas for XRP Las Vegas and not poke their head in anyway. So we'll see on that. I don't know one way or the other. Okay, now um, let's, and, and I've got, if you're in the DAIXRP.com group, um, I've got up at the top, I've pinned the discount code for XRP Las Vegas. If you're not, just look in the description of this video. And I've got all the links where you can go and buy your tickets. I'll see you there. Gold record high, Bitcoin record high, break evens soaring, and the Fed hasn't even started cutting rates. Look at this, folks. Look at this. We've got a $66,455 Bitcoin, and we've got a 66 cent XRP. XRP on the 24 hours up 6%, seven days 22%. You can feel it, folks, and these chart guys can feel it too. Um, this is from Egrag Crypto. Let's look down. Um, uh, the, he says, stay steady because soon you'll regret not buying XRP below $1. Kiss goodbye to the one, kiss goodbye to the $1 mark. I've always felt like in the end, XRP will be moving in the dollars 
at a time daily. I mean, that's where I think this is eventually, and people are going to be like, wait a minute, you got XRP under a dollar? I believe, I, I heard somebody say it the other day, and this is kind of what I believe too. I believe there will be a day when people are like, I can't get any XRP. Where do you go and get it? Can you? Where it's like that. That's why I'm actually continuing to, I've, I've recently I've been accumulating XRP and XLM myself. Dark Defender gets it. He says, I cannot see the melting faces now, but I can feel them. XRP to targets. Lark Davis, this is an interesting phenomenon going on too. OTC desks are running out of Bitcoin. Suppliers must return to public exchanges to source new Bitcoin when demand is overwhelming. The supply and demand pressure is building. This is what I think is going to happen to XRP too. I believe that the exchange, I believe that you will, they will be, the XRP will be literally held by a lot of institutions and that at some point retail won't, won't even be able to get it. That's what I believe down the road. All right, check this out. Um, Anders had a uh, really interesting tweet. What do you think Ripple is doing here? Drinking tea and discussing the weather? At the BIS cross-border payments interoperability and extension task force composition. And there's Ripple and there's Swift. And Andrew is right. What are they doing? Here's This is the people from the BIS talking about this. Fast payment systems enable people to pay for things digitally and instantaneously. For example, if you pay your fitness instructor or buy groceries using a fast payment system, that money is instantly available in the account of the provider, be it an individual or a business, no matter what time or day. Some examples are Twint in Switzerland, Pix in Brazil, UPI in India, or Prompt Pay in Thailand. Fast payments have soared in popularity. This is likely because they allow digital transactions to be quicker and in many cases cheaper. This is helpful for e-commerce and for transactions between individuals. They may also help reach people that don't have access to banks and therefore don't have debit or credit cards. Fast payments have been widely adopted in some places, but not so in others. Different countries have taken different approaches to designing them. In our work, we find that designs that focus on the needs of the end user are important. For example, making it easier to pay bills or make person-to-person -person payments. We also find that collaboration between the public and the private sector in providing fast payment systems is important for adoption. This is the first step in exploring important design features of fast payment systems, and we hope that this kickstarts for the research on this topic. All right, then we got this. This is cool. This is um, uh, Mikkel XR at XRP. Mikkel, smart guy. Like uh, he's he's one of the uh, he's one of the people that I've that I've seen in in the um, XRP community that is always positive and and extremely smart and knowledgeable. I like him. And by the way, here's his channel. You need to go give this guy a follow. He's one of those people that deserves more subscribers than he's got on YouTube, and they will come because he has a lot of good content and sticks with it. Just go to uh, YouTube and type in Mickle, and you can um, give him a subscribe just like I just did. I didn't know I wasn't subscribed to him. But listen to what he says here. This is interesting right here. And remember, before I play this, Remember, Ripple and R3 have a, a long past. They were they were even in a lawsuit, and the lawsuit was settled confidentially, but the lawsuit was literally over an option, an option contract for XRP that R3 had, which is a big part of the reason that we talk pre-allocation and things like that, is the idea that there's all these contracts that Ripple has and NDAs that they can't talk about, and so we've always kind of talked about that, but listen to, look at what he found. Now, the thing that's really blowing up this speculation in the XRP community right now that everyone's talking about is a new IMF report that was just released, where essentially in that report, they talk about a blockchain technology with issue stabled coins built on R3 XRP blockchain. 
Now, that's worded very interesting because what we know is people have said forever, R3 is not using XRP. It was just a test in the past. That's not happening anymore. But this IMF report was released in February 2024, and it specifically calls out R3 XRP blockchain. Now, in terms of the public, we have never heard of something like this. This is something we have never seen before. So it begs the question, right? Is this a typo? Is this a mistake? Or do we just learn about something, right, that we have never seen before? Now, like I already said, this would be a big deal because if R3 is using XRP, then it doesn't matter who is building your central banking platform, whether it's R3 or Ripple, it's still coming back to XRP. So this was dropped and it stirred up a lot of drama. Is R3 using XRP or not? A lot of people looked at this and said, this is obviously a typo. There's no such thing as R3 XRP blockchain. But kind of a weird typo to be coming out from the IMF. This doesn't really seem like a typo to me, but how are we really gonna know? How are we gonna prove this? Well, I did some digging and- Okay, and the so thing he, that that's what his whole video is about, but this is apparently a quote from the report based on R3 XRP blockchain, and he says XRP R3 secret partnership. Now, the one thing I do know, because Darren Moore had put out a clip a long time ago where it was, it was the CTO of um, R3, his name was Richard something, I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, so, uh, Ryan Selkis had asked him uh, about Ripple, and he said, I just can't talk about Ripple. So he, they're obviously under NDAs, too. That's interesting. Now, let me show you one more thing before we go into the group. This is very interesting. This right here, I found this morning. And it's that same, uh, the German guy, his name is Oliver Michel or M Mitchell. I don't know how you say that. But... Um, he apparently goes on to their, the German counterpart of CNBC almost at least a few times a week and he talks about what's going on in crypto. And here he did what CNBC and Squawk Box have not been willing to do and that is talk about John Deaton as a serious challenger and a good challenger for the anti-crypto Elizabeth Warren. Watch this. Elizabeth Warren bekommt Konkurrenz und zwar geht es hier Elizabeth Warren, wissen wir, ist eigentlich Krypto-Gegnerin und sie ist jetzt schon seit zehn Jahren im Amt der Senatorin ähm, of Massachusetts. Jetzt kommt aber John Deaton und möchte ihr das Amt streitig machen, tritt sozusagen gegen sie an, eine ernstzunehmende Konkurrenz und vor allen Dingen von der Einstellung her, was Krypto angeht, eine völlig andere. Was könnte das nach sich ziehen? Absolut richtig. Ähm wir wollen uns ja aus Politik raushalten, aber hier in diesem speziellen Fall äh, gucken wir uns das mal an. Wir hatten ja schon mehrfach die Elizabeth Warren charakterisiert, äh, Freundin der Banken, Freundin von Gary Gensler, äh, hat eine Kryptobill auf den Weg gebracht, die das komplette Kryptogeschäft in den USA zum Erliegen bringen würde. Also diese Frau ist für die Kryptoszene in den USA gefährlich und die Kryptoszene in den USA ist wegweisend für uns alle. Also insofern, hier muss man aufpassen, Anti-Krypto-Army, da steht er drüber. Und er hat sich jetzt aufgemacht, hier diesen Platz streitig zu machen, den sie seit 10, 11 Jahren inne hat. Sie ist ein absoluter Pro Pro Politikprofi und er ist ein Normalo. Er ist Rechtsanwalt, er hat die 70.000 XRP-Holder vertreten im Rechtsstreit Ripple gegen die SEC. Er ist eine, eine Rechtsanwaltslegende in der Kryptoszene. Er ist ein ganz normaler Mensch und ein echter Sympathieträger. Und die ganze Szene hängt natürlich jetzt an ihm hinten dran, sowohl finanziell in der Unterstützung, als natürlich auch, solche Schlachten werden ja jetzt in den sozialen Medien ausgetragen. Und äh, da gibt es viele Leute mit Millionen von Followern, die ihm jetzt äh, die Stange halten und sie hat auch schon die erste Flatter bekommen, hat mehrere Briefe in ihren Kreis geschrieben, um Spenden gebeten, andere Senatoren um Unterstützung gebeten und fängt auch jetzt an, ähm, Kampagne gegen ihn zu machen. Also es wird sehr interessant sein zu beobachten. Äh, er hat sich natürlich nicht nur mit dem Thema Krypto aufgestellt, sondern er ist breit aufgestellt, Migration, Healthcare, also das, was man halt braucht. Aber Fazit ist, wenn er in den US-Senat einzieht, dann werden wir das in der Kryptoszene merken. Müssen uns auch noch ein bisschen Die Wahl gucken. steht an im Herbst. Ja. Man, that guy is smart and he gets it. You know what I'm going to do right here, right now? I'm going to, well, let's see. It's this guy's. Let me see if I can uh, copy him here. And I'm going, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, uh, tell um, 
digital perspectives. Brad comes. Why don't we? Why don't you get him, Oliver Mitchell or Michelle, to come to XRP Ve uh, Las Vegas? And then I'll do digital. There we go. There we go. Let's get this guy. I mean, this guy is sharp. I like him. Okay, now we're going to, in, in um, uh, many of you don't remember, but when Stephen Narioff showed up, about the time I started showing some of the things that he was posting is when my X account got turned off. And so we're not going to cover. I, I touch on him out here, but I'm not going to really, really cover what he's saying out here. So what we're going to do is in DAIXRP.com, he just recently did an interview, and I'm going to show you some of that, and I'm going to talk about my thoughts on some of the things he's saying. And I'm also going to talk about, because I got to meet him when I was in D.C. interviewing for the XRP Unleashed documentary, and um, I got to sit there and talk to him for a while. Uh, maybe I'll remember some things that I can talk about. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family. Here we go. Let's go see what Stephen Narioff said 